We have a crate of mass 25kg sliding down on a plane which is inclined at 15 degrees to the horizontal. During the first part of the motion from A to B, there is no friction between the crate and the plane. But part BC has a rough surface and is denoted there by some dotted lines. And then 5.1 says draw a free body diagram of all the four six acting on the crate while it moves from b to c so from b to c is the part that has uh, the friction right so if i draw the object there uh, somewhere in uh, bc obviously we're gonna have the normal force acting perpendicular to the surface right because that's how the normal force acts perpendicular to a surface and then we have fg pointing down because as long as we are on a body there's always going to be fg whether we are on earth uh, whether we are on mars like in question six of this question paper there's always going to be fg and then another force that is acting is friction right uh, like we are told friction opposes the direction of the motion uh, thus as a result um, is pointing towards point a right because that's where the object is coming from so if we draw a free body diagram of all those forces we're gonna have our free body there and then the normal force um the fg uh, force due to the gravity right and then we're gonna have our frictional force and with that we're gonna get our three marks and now we can move to 5.2 5.2 says calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the crate while it moves from a to b so the best way of solving this kind of problems you have to draw a free body diagram first so that you can have a good understanding a good idea of what's going on so if we draw a free body diagram um while it moves from a to b we know that we have a normal force because it's resting on a surface right and then we have fg like we always do but then in this case we don't have gravity because from point a to <laughs> but in this case we don't have friction because from pro point a to point b the surface is said to be frictional less so yeah that's a good point to start now what we're gonna say is that f net equals to ma and all the time when you're solving this kind of problems where you're supposed to count the acceleration the tension and all those kind of things you're always gonna start by f net equals to ma it's the same thing you're gonna do even when you're in grade 12 f net equals to ma and then in place of f net You put uh, the biggest force uh, that is acting on the body, right? And subtract all the small forces that are opposing the motion. But as you can see on this body of ours, we only have one force acting on the acting horizontally, uh, which is FG parallel, right? Because for FG, we're gonna have FG parallel and fg perpendicular so in place of f net we're just gonna say fg parallel if we had friction then we're gonna say minus friction and maybe if we had another box um connected to that box we're also gonna have minus tension but for this case we just have fg parallel so we're gonna say that this fg parallel is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration and then in place of fg parallel we can put uh the mass right which is uh 25 kg multiplied by 9,8 multiplied by sine of 15 degrees because this is this here is fg 
uh, 25 multiplied by 9,8 is FG, right? If the mass multiplied by the gravitational acceleration. And this part here, it gives us uh, the parallel component of FG, right? If we were interested on the perpendicular component, we, we, we were going to use cos. But then in this case, we are only interested on the parallel. So we are using sine. So this will be equals to, we know the mass of the object fully well, that is 25 kgs, right? So this will be equals to 25 and then multiply by the acceleration. What's the acceleration? It's what we are interested in, right? So now we're just solving for A. We are done with the physics, basically. We just have a math problem. So we're going to have uh, the acceleration, which is equals to uh, 25 multiplied by 9,8, um, multiplied by sine of 15 degrees, uh, divided by 25. And then if you put that in your calculator, you're going to get A equals to 2.54 meters per second squared, right? And then you get your four marks. And now for 5.3, it says, write down the direction of the acceleration of the crate while it slows down from B to C. Uh, the key phrase here is slows down, while it slows down, right, from B to C, right, only up the slope or down the slope. So think about it. If an object is slowing down, it has a negative acceleration or is decelerating which is uh, a term we don't really use in physics uh, but then if a object uh, velocity is increasing or its speed is increasing then is acceler the acceleration of the body is positive right yeah we are told that it is slowing down so its velocity or its speed uh, is decreasing right it can only decrease if the acceleration is negative and then as the object is moving down the slope, it only makes sense that if uh, the acceleration is negative, it is up the slope, right? So the acceleration of this body is up the slope. And then uh, for 5.4, it says um, we must... Uh, the magnitude of the net acceleration from B to C is 1.2 meters per second, right? Uh, per second squared. And then it says calculate the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the crate. So again, we know that the mass of the object is uh, 25 kg, right? And that uh, the acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared. That's what they're telling us. And now we're supposed to calculate the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the crate. Do you have any idea how we're supposed to solve this? Yes, the idea you have is right. Again, we're going to say F net equals to ma it's very rare that you're gonna solve these kind of problems and not use f net equals to ma like you're always gonna use this uh, formula because now we know that uh from b to c there is frictional instead of just having fg parallel equals to ma like we did this time we're gonna have fg parallel plus minus uh, friction right because friction is always opposing the direction of the motion uh, this is obviously equals to ma this is our standard procedure if you find yourself doing anything else other than this you're doing something wrong so what is fg we know that fg is 25 multiplied by 9,8 and then the parallel component we're going to multiply by sine of 15. Again, if we we're looking for the uh, perpendicular component, we're going to multiply by cos of 15 degrees and then minus uh, friction, right? Which is what you are interested in. And this will be equals to the mass of the object, which is 
25 kg right multiply by an acceleration of 1.2 meters per second squared and then um what you have to realize here is that we have to substitute at the acceleration with a negative sign right of so that will give us minus 1.2 why are we <laughs> substituting it with a negative sign because in 5.3 we said that since the object is slowing down the acceleration it's up the slope so it's opposite to our direction of motion right if it's opposite to our direction of motion we put a negative sign just like we did with our friction so we're gonna have minus friction is equals to 25 multiplied by minus uh 1.2 right and then we're gonna subtract uh this whole expression here right so if we do that uh we're gonna get minus um 25 multiplied by 9,8 uh multiplied by sine of 15. so minus uh friction will be equals to uh minus 93.41 newton uh just to write it largely we will see this is uh friction uh being equals to 93.41 newton